Alibaba reported what looked like pretty lackluster results, but there is a lot of stuff under the surface that it's really important to take a deep dive on. And so that's what we're gonna be covering in this deep dive of Alibaba's Q3 results. So smash that like button and subscribe if you're new. You're watching more money, let's get it. What's up guys, and thank you so much for your patience in me getting this video available for you guys. Now, as you guys are well aware, Alibaba has gone nowhere but down since the reporting of the results, and year to date, the company's down 18%. Today, it closed for the first time under $100 per share. So it's not looking good for Alibaba in this environment. But as you guys may recall, Alibaba's share price has very little to do with the day-to-day -day operations of the company. And as a value investor in this business, I don't really care where the stock price goes over the short term. What I really care about is how are the operations of the company functioning. I always say I'm not a value investor, I'm a business owner. And so that's the way that we're gonna look at Alibaba in this video. Now, right off the cusp, you can see that China Commerce Retail's number of annual active customers has grown 15% year over year to 979 million people, which reflects a 13% year over year growth. Now, one reporting consideration that I do wanna make here is that Alibaba says that they actually deduplicated their number of annual active customers for China. China, which means that for customers in China where they have multiple touch points, they removed that double counting. Now, personally, I really respect that. And I'm not so sure that I would handle it in that way because I believe that if I earn the business across multiple touch points, that's two separate customers for those separate businesses. And I can make a case for reporting growth in that fashion. So the fact that Alibaba decided to not do that is very commendable and respectable. So I just wanted to make that point. Now, moving on to the results. From this chart, you'll see that the way that they want to discuss their results is by focusing on their legacy or more established businesses, which is Taobao and Tmall. And they are also providing depth on their new growth initiatives in Taobao deals and Tao Sai Sai. And if you recall from their investor day presentation, they laid out their strategy with Taobao and Tmall. They showed us this slide where they explained that although the personal care, cosmetics and apparel categories are their online mature categories, they still expect to continue growing these out by incubating new types of products with merchants to stimulate the consumption of those newer products. Also guys, they pointed out the high potential categories that they intend to be focusing on, which include home decor, food, and groceries, and of course, to a smaller extent, pet supplies. These categories are growing at a much faster rate as it relates to online spending, and so it's a major strategic focus for them. And you can see here, when I turn back to this slide, that they have positioned themselves well to be the leader in the online food and grocery space in China with their Sun Art and Fresh Hippo brands. And of course, you guys have seen me use this graphic a lot. This brings their whole strategy into focus, where on the top, you can see that if a Chinese consumer wishes to purchase food from restaurants or retailers or grocery from a Fresh Hopo grocery store, if they live within a three kilometer radius of the retailer, the focus here is that the Alibaba ecosystem will allow for a 30 minute to one hour delivery with the use of their Ellie.me Uber Eats like type platform. And if you're purchasing something a bit further away, say up to 20 kilometers away from a Sun Art grocery store or a Tmall Mart, you'll be able to get it that same day or next day. And that's something that even Amazon can't do in North America right now. And that's just one part of their overall online strategy. If you remember, they are also focusing on the biggest growth opportunity for China retail markets, which is the growth and emergence into e-commerce with the less developed regions. So from here, you can see that tier three cities only have 81% of their population penetrated online and tier four cities and smaller have only 71% of their populations on the internet, at least as of September of 2021. So there's a massive opportunity here. And one such opportunity is the fast growing community buying online business where groups of consumers come together to purchase products from manufacturers at huge discounts. This is where their Taobao deals and Tao Sai Sai businesses come into focus. Now, when you think of group buying, think of it like this. A toothpaste manufacturer would only be able to sell so much inventory to a regional store buyer. 
and that will service just regular demand. Now, if a manufacturer wants to get a boost in sales, the retailers have to decide to run sales to sell more of that toothpaste. And I'm sure there are regular intervals where that's done. But with community buying, the manufacturer can partially cut out the middleman and go right to the consumer by offering a huge group buying discount, which could be approximately 40 or 50%, which previously would have been the gross margin on the sale of the product that the retail took from the consumer retail price. So the manufacturer can sell much more volume by adding this as a market opportunity for them. Will this strategy piss off retailers? Yeah, probably. So there has to be an overall strategy built in to not piss them off too much, but ultimately you're going after different markets here. Now the question is, how are these segments doing? Well, you can see from here that with Taobao and Tmall, they're able to retain almost 9 out of 10 new customers that they gained during the 2020 lockdowns. So that's a great sign of their platform strength. With Taobao deals, you can see that it grew 16% in the quarter. Yes, in three months, they grew 16% to 280 million annual active customers. With Tao Sai Sai, you can see that 50% of their buyers were gained in 2021. So China retail is largely firing on all cylinders and they're achieving their organizational goals, which they outlined in their investor day in December. Furthermore, you can see from their press release that the percentage of new customers in less developed areas continues to increase, which of course is completely correlated with their goals to go after that market. And Tao Sai Sai grew 30% quarter over quarter. The biggest win here is that this app appears to be driving higher penetration into their annual active customers as the purchases of food and groceries increase a customer stickiness to their platform. And you're seeing a double benefit here as they are also continuing to see unit economics per order continue to improve, which is of course making the business more profitable overall. With that said, however, if you weren't paying attention at this point of the video, you would think that this is all going well with Alibaba, but in fact, this isn't the case. We can see that it's not smooth sailing here at all because even after reporting from the strong quarter, you can see that their stock continued to slide downward by over 18% to where it has fallen under that $100 per share mark. And why is this happening? Well, because from here, you can see that the Chinese consumer is slowing. The December quarter year over year grew only 7%, which normally wouldn't be an issue. But it is an issue for Alibaba because this one segment consists of 71% of their revenue. And you guys already know on this channel, we like to dive as deep as we can. So if you dive a bit deeper here, last quarter, you may recall that the market was just stunned when they saw the customer management subsegment of the overall China commerce segment grow by only 3%. So you can imagine how disappointed the market would be to see this subsegment actually declining in the current quarter year over year. I may be wrong here, but to my knowledge, this is the first time in the history of the company that the customer management subsegment went backwards, even if it's on a quarter over quarter basis. And what are the reasons for this? Well, the management team is using the same reasons that they used last quarter, which includes slowing market conditions as well as competition. And that's the first point that I wanna discuss on as it's something that I have discussed quite a bit on this channel already. The Chinese consumer is slowing. The Chinese government just came out this past week and set their GDP target of around 5.5% growth. That's insane because it's nearing Western country GDP growth rates. And this is stuff you guys may not see on other channels that cover Alibaba because they just cover it linearly. They don't really look at what's happening in the peripherals. What's scary about this article, if you really dive deep into it, is that they stated that in order for China to achieve those targets, they need flexible and appropriate monetary policy. So this does mean that the government of China will need to put money into the system to achieve their growth objectives 
And that does not sound like high quality growth for me. And if you look at what all the analysts are expecting for China's GDP growth, they're generally expecting something under 5.5% for 2022. So that's scary, guys. Now, don't let me scare you completely because it's not all bad news. For the China commerce segment, remember that I told you that the next generation of online commerce growth in China is expected to be primarily in that online grocery ordering space as you can see here again and they are winning the hearts and the minds of the Chinese consumer. The sub-segment revenues are up a whopping 21% year over year. Now the devil is all now guys the devil is always in the details. Note guys that they started consolidating Sun Art in October of 2020 so it's not exactly an apples to apples comparison as one month of the prior year is missing. So don't go forecasting 21% growth year over year for the final quarter of the year. With that said, the catalyst that we're all waiting for is some form of reversal in the slowdown of the Chinese consumer. With that 5.5% GDP growth rate stated for 2022, I really don't see the recovery happening in 2022. Because as the more seasoned investors may understand, things don't just recover overnight, they take time to reverse and correct, if at all. In addition to the inflationary headwinds experienced in 2021, there were two big shocks that really impacted the Chinese economy, which included the elimination of the for-profit education industry and the big slowdown in the Chinese real estate sector. I've gone over this many times on this channel. So there's lots of people looking for work right now, and that doesn't even include the large bubble of students who are also gonna be looking for work once they graduate. So guys, there's quite a few things that the Chinese government needs to address, and if I'm being honest, over the short term at least, it can go in either direction. But over the long term, I do believe that the Chinese consumer will return, the economy will get back on the right tracks, and we will see growth but it's going to be a bumpy ride. And of course, guys, feel free to disagree with me in the comments below. I'm not ever looking to be right. I just want to find the truth. And so in part two of this Alibaba deep dive into the Q3 results, I'm going to go over all of the other segments and give my inputs onto the performance therein. And so if you haven't done so already, guys, please consider subscribing to the channel and ringing that notification bell so you are notified when that video comes out. And if you haven't seen it already, I did a really good first look on Alibaba's Q3 results, which you can get to right here.